the one to rule them all for now. Hey guys and welcome back to another random distractions video. In the previous video I unboxed the latest addition to my home theater which were the Arundel 1961 and 1723S speakers. Uh, but before that I actually had two videos and they were uh, covering eight different methods of how to incorporate uh, my subwoofers into my home theater system uh, for Anthem calibration. In those videos I mentioned that I was leaning towards a specific method to go with uh, based on all the tests and everything that I was doing and then also some listening that I was doing and that I would share that at a different video and the time to share that is now. Before I do though, it's important for me to say that I'm not saying that this is the best method to use. Um, this is the best method that works for me in my room. Uh, there's actually a lot of factors that uh, go into choosing the right method to, uh, for your room. It depends on the speakers and subs that you're using, the placements, uh, placement of those speakers and subs, uh, your room size, the acoustics, and also what you personally hear or what you personally like uh, to hear from your system. I did this so that I could hear and see with REW uh, what each of the different methods uh, were doing in my room. First, my overall impressions of all eight methods, and if you missed what those eight methods are, I'll put a link to the videos up here um, so you can take a look at those. So methods one, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, when I was listening to those, they all sounded the same to me. Uh, method two uh, sounded similar but with more bass. And then methods three and four didn't sound that great. Uh, method three was actually the method that I was using previously and I thought sounded good. Uh, but when I was doing all these different methods, uh, when compared to one, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, method number three was really boomy um, and actually didn't sound that great. Um, method four uh, immediately sounded really weak uh, compared to all the other methods. While all the methods are really not that difficult to do, uh, I would say probably methods seven and eight are the ones that are a little bit tougher. Uh, method seven, you have to find the peaks and that can be a little bit hard, so you're kind of guessing where that is. Just a quick interruption here. I was editing the video and I realized that I forgot to mention some things about uh, method seven, uh, which is the one where you're trying to get the peaks to be at 72 dB. And when you're in quick measure, uh, unfortunately, it only shows the uh, line for 70 and then the line for 80. Uh, so you're kind of guessing there. However, you can see from this graph when it did the measurements that it does look like I may have put them in the right spot. However, if Anthem was looking at uh, the peaks of the subwoofers, then method one, which is the one where I just lower by one dB until it tells me that it's not too loud and it keeps on going, uh, that when I looked at the measurements that they would be around the same as what the 72 one was. However, if you look at the graph of that method, one of the subs is actually hitting almost 80 dB peaks, uh, while the other one looks like maybe around 76, maybe 77. To get a better look, I decided to go back into quick measure because uh, there is an option to uh, have arc on or have arc off. And with arc off, you can see it's averaging around 70 dB, uh, but like I said, the peak is almost hidden about 80 dBs. Then when you turn arc on, uh, it's still averaging around 70 dBs, but the, <laughs> the curve is a lot smoother and it actually seems like it's hitting uh, almost near like 75 dB at the most. That was for sub 1 and sub 2 was actually about the same. It was also uh, averaging about 70 dBs uh, without arc, uh, but the peaks for that one are, like I said, closer to like 76, maybe 77 dBs. Um, and then after arc, uh, they were still, uh, it was still around 70, but the uh, curve was a lot smoother and they were probably averaging around 75 as well. In addition to that, when I look at the levels uh, after, you know, everything's done, it showed that the, for method seven, the subwoofers were boosted nine and seven dBs. And whereas for method one, they were only boosted three dBs each. Um, so it seems like for method seven, the subwoofers weren't turned up enough, so Anthem was boosting them uh, way up. So for my room, looking at the peaks didn't feel like it was the way to go. I felt like for method one, I'm at getting maybe the most out of the subs that Anthem is looking for uh, without being too much or being too little. However, this doesn't mean that I won't tweak it, as you will see in the rest of this video. So back to that. 
And then method eight, uh, you have to EQ the, the curve uh, before you run uh, the uh, arc genesis. And that also, you know, depending on <laughs> how it's acting, your subwoofer is acting, that may be a little bit easier or harder to achieve uh, as far as smoothing out the curve. Methods three, four, five, and six all use uh, quick measurement to get some sort of measurement uh, before you start. And that's actually not that hard to do. Uh, so those are a little bit easier. And then methods one and two are the simplest really, uh, with method one being the absolute uh, easiest to, to pull off. In the second video of the subwoofer methods, I also shared the levels uh, for each of the different methods. And by far the ones with the biggest swings were the subs. Methods five, six, and seven had the highest levels. Methods three and four had the lowest levels. Methods one, two, and eight had about average levels, it seemed like. So because of all of those factors and taking a look at the different measurements, uh, I decided to lean towards method one or two. And method two is actually just increasing the uh, sub levels in the SVS app. So it's still method one uh, with just a modification to it. Speaking of modifications, in regards to method one, I liked how it sounded and that is technically what Anthem wants you to do with your system or wants your system to sound like, but I still wanted to modify it, which is why I liked uh, what method two was doing. I like bass and for how I like to hear the system, which is usually dependent on who's at the house, uh, since I, uh, my family doesn't sh share the same appreciation as I do for the system, um, so I usually have to listen to a little bit lower. Uh, but luckily or unluckily, depending on how you view it, Anthem gives you a lot of options uh, to try to fix that or adjust that. So now that I had a method, let me go through the different modifications or options that I wanted to try on that method. Option one was just the baseline, so no adjustments to whatever came out of Arc Genesis after doing uh, the calibration and uh, left it at that. Option number two was to increase the subwoofer levels in the GUI menu uh, to plus 3 dB. Option number three was to go into the GUI and increase the subwoofer levels to plus 6 dB. Option number four was to go into the GUI menu and adjust the subwoofers to plus 10 dB. Option number five was to reset the GUI level of the subwoofers back to zero, uh, but adjust the SVS app to plus 3 dB. Option number six was to reset the GUI to zero on the subwoofers, uh, but then increase in the SVS app plus 6 dB for each of the subs. Option number seven was again to start at the baseline, but add a 3 dB boost in the room gain. Option number eight was having that 3 dB boost in the room gain, and then in the GUI, increasing the subs plus 3 dB. Option number nine was having the 3 dB room gain and adjusting in the GUI, the subwoofers to plus 6 dB. Option number 10 was having that room gain at 3 dB and adjusting in the GUI, the subwoofer levels plus 10 dB. Option number 11 was still having that 3 dB boost in the room gain, uh, but resetting the GUI subwoofer levels to zero and adjusting the SVS app to plus 3 dB for each of the subs. And finally, option number 12, uh, which was having that 3 dB uh, room gain, the zero in the GUI uh, for the subwoofers, uh, but plus six uh, in the SVS app for each of the subs. My theory behind using the SVS app versus the GUI to increase the levels is that the GUI is uh, obviously a lot simpler to adjust uh, than having to go into the SVS app and adjusting each of the subs individually. I know, first world problems, but I wanted to see if it would f affect the sound uh, one way or the other, you know, depending on which one I used. So let's take a look at REW. First, the sweep. Here's option one, which is straight out of the box and it's fairly even. Uh, although the Anthem does apply a house curve, so you can see a slight bump in the lower frequencies here. With option two, I added a plus three dB in the GUI. Option three, I added a plus six dB. And then option four, I added a plus 10 dB. As you can see, everything after about 139 is pretty much the same. The only increase is below that and it stays pretty controlled. Back to option one and adding option five, uh, which is adding 3 dB, but this time in the SVS app. And option six uh, is adding plus 6 dB in the SVS app. Similar situation that about above 131, it's the same and only increases below that. When I compare option two, which is adding the 3 dB in the GUI, to option five, which is adding the 3 dB in the SVS app, 
they are pretty close, uh, with the SVS increase being slightly higher, uh, about 1 dB in some spots. Comparing option 3, which is adding the 6 dB in the GUI, to option 6, uh, which was adding 6 dB in the SVS app, they are also pretty similar. Uh, but this time the GUI version is a little bit higher in some spots by about 2 dB. When I compare option 1, the baseline, to option 7, which added the plus 3 dB in the room gain, uh, it does look different, but part of that is because uh, they were actually different uh, days that I recorded these. Um, so above 300 hertz, they're actually a lot more similar. Unfortunately, I didn't have a full day to test all of these out, and some of them came to mind after the first day. However, uh, from 300 and under, it does boost the lower regions a bit. Staying with option 7 and turning on the GUI increases, uh, which were plus 3 dB for option 8, then 6 dB for option 9, and plus 10 dB for option 10. Um, option 10 was also a different day, hence the difference in the higher frequencies. However, the lower frequencies do go up nicely and stay relatively controlled. Then comparing the GUI boost of plus 3 dB for option 8 uh, versus the plus 3 dB uh, in the SVS app in option 11, these are pretty much the same in the lower region. Similar result with the plus 6 in the GUI versus the plus 6 in the SVS app of options 9 and 12. When I compared the noise test, it gave me very similar results. The plus 3 dB boost in the GUI, which is option 8, uh, was a little less than using the SVS app, which is option 11. The 6 dB boost in the GUI was a little more than the 6 dB boost in the SVS app. And finally, the Dolby demo tests, which actually proved even more similar as far as measurements go, uh, as you can see with all of them turned on here. Comparing the plus 3 dB in the GUI versus the plus 3 in the SVS app, uh, for both they are really close, and the same can be said about the plus 6 in the GUI, which is option 9, and or the plus 6 in the SVS app, which is option 12. The one interesting thing is that if I turn on option 10, which was the plus 10 dB in the GUI, it doesn't actually look that much different from the 6 dB boost. So since I wasn't seeing a big difference, I wondered if I could actually hear a difference. So I went through and loaded one profile at a time. In between, I would listen to a couple of different songs and watch a couple of different movie clips. So first, the baseline or option one. This actually sounds really good if you can turn up the volume. Unfortunately, I can't turn up the volume that loud. Um, so when I turned it down to where I would normally listen to it, uh, the bass was kind of missing a little bit. When compared to option seven, which is increasing the room gain by three dB, um, it sounds good uh, as well. And the bass does go up a little bit. Um, and again, if you can turn it up, it's, it sounds really great. Since I liked it, what the room gain uh, was doing, I went ahead and left it at that, and then tried options 8 and 11, which was adding either 3 dB in the GUI or 3 dB in the SVS app. Uh, they actually sounded the same to me, um, and the one thing I noticed is that during movies, uh, bass sounded pretty good um, in, in this uh, setting. But as far as for music, it was still missing a little bit for me, uh, or at least how I like to hear music. Then with options 9 and 12, which was increasing by 6 dB either in the GUI or the SVS app, uh, they sounded uh, pretty much the same to me too, uh, but it did provide uh, with either one a good boost in the bass uh, for the music and for movies, especially even at the lower volumes that I typically uh, listen to or have to listen to. I did try a 10 dB boost uh, only using the GUI, uh, but what I found was that it was actually too much. Um, so even at lower volumes, uh, the bass was just constantly there and it was hard to hear anything else. So I didn't even try the SVS app since it was way too much anyway. And since all the measurements are showing that it's pretty similar, <laughs> I didn't see the need to try to do that. For example, the plus 6 dB seemed to shake the house <laughs> in like uh, a good way and you know where it made sense. Uh, whereas the 10 dB boost kind of shook it a lot more and more often and just constantly. If you're a big bass head, this may be an option for you. Based on what I heard and saw in REW, I decided to go with option 9, which was the 3 dB boost in the room gain and then a 6 dB boost in the GUI menu. 
It added that extra kick that I was looking for in music and in the movies uh, without having to go really loud and getting screamed at by the wife. Although you could see in the Dolby demo uh, measurements that I took uh, that even at negative 25, the Anthem is reaching around average 102 dBs. So it's still for sure enough. As I said in the beginning, I did get some new speakers and per the manufacturer's website, they actually suggest a break-in period of 50 hours. Uh, so I'll probably in a month or two uh, rerun the calibration and see you know, what it sounds like then. Before that though, the next video is going to be my review on the Arundels uh, and what I think of them, uh, since I should have them uh, for a little bit uh, more by then and have a better idea of like what to say or what I think about them. Well, that's all I had for this video. Uh, I would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this one. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.